Hi, I'm Mark and I'm passionate about English and as you can see I'm having a bath. I imagine this is the first time you've uh, had a, an English lesson from someone in the bath but uh, that's the idea. I hope you uh, <laughs> I hope you like it and it encourages you to share with your friends on Facebook or just uh, by word of mouth. So word of mouth means uh, things spread by people telling their friends and relatives and so on. But as I've said in the actual courses uh, starting in September, I won't be doing uh, silly things like this, but I'll still make the lessons fun. And they'll be about three hours long with lots and lots of uh, different sections. You can watch them when you like, however many times you like. And uh, yeah, I think they're going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so um, I thought I'd uh, teach you an idiom to start with, um, which I already thought of because it's appropriate as I'm in the bath. Um, <clears throat> and it is like water off a duck's back. So, of course, you know the duck, uh, the type of bird that uh, uh, swims in the water or kind of floats in the water. And uh, if we say, like water off a duck's back. I'll give you an example first. Let's say somebody, um, people insult him a lot or say bad things about him and he, and he knows that, but it doesn't bother him in any way. He's not worried about it. It doesn't affect him. We can say to him, it's like water off a duck's back. Because of course, water just doesn't stay on a duck's back because of the oil in the feathers, it just comes off and leaves no trace, no water. Um, I'll see if I can think of uh, another example quickly. Um, yeah, let's say, I don't know, uh, maybe somebody has to work very hard and do a lot of overtime, um, but they don't mind, um, they don't complain, um, and they, you can again say to him or to her, it's like water off a duck's back. And as you can see, there are two ducks behind me, and one of them actually is a radio that floats in the bath, but I don't use it. Uh, it was a present from Lynn, so thank you, Liz. <laughs> okay, and um, I'm going to teach you several easy phrasal verbs today by telling you what I did this morning. And um, as you will see, English is not so difficult. It's actually using the easy stuff um, more naturally. Okay, so I woke up about uh, 6.30 and um, I got up about 7. First thing I did was uh, put the kettle on and make myself a cup of coffee. I turned on my laptop, checked my emails and uh, Facebook messages and so on and sent a few uh, Facebook messages and then I ran a bath. Okay, that's a funny one, but uh, when we say we put the water in the bath, we say I ran a bath. Okay, but first I had a shave, and then I brushed my teeth, and then I set the camera up in the bathroom, <laughs> and um, then I got in the bath. Uh, oh, before that, of course, I turned on the water, or turned on the tap, and when it was finished, I turned off the tap. And then I got in the bath. Of course, I also put some bubbles in the bath, uh, just in case, but I don't think you can see anything. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, and um, I think, did I, oh no, while I ran the bath, I had a shave and I brushed my teeth. Okay, so that's kind of stuff you learn at uh, beginner level. Um, I got up, or I woke up and so on. But still, many people, even quite good English speakers, don't use uh, or don't speak naturally with this kind of easy stuff, easy vocabulary. So one thing I would really recommend you do is actually, okay, you don't maybe want to sound like me, but you can copy what I say, uh, copy the intonation. And, um, you know, it's... I know when I was learning some Italian, I kind of felt a bit, or Japanese, I felt a little bit embarrassed to sound Japanese or to sound Italian. 
But it's very difficult for a, a native English speaker to understand an Italian, for example, if they speak Italian English. I, I got up uh, this morning, you know what I mean. Uh, you know, it, it's fun, but uh, it's better you actually learn to sound English. So I recommend you copy me and, and say it aloud, not just uh, in your mind. Okay, and um, also I wanted to say that uh, um, a, a kind of collocation, uh, it's not difficult of course, is a nice hot bath. We could often say, oh, I really fancy a nice hot bath. Okay. And uh, I believe in, uh, in movies they often don't have the water very hot because of the steam. So many actors and actresses have to suffer while they, uh, if they're filming in the bath because the water is quite cold. Okay. Now I have to uh, get up a little bit and uh, get the joke book. Or no, I won't. I will remember it. Okay, um, a little boy is at the swimming pool and the lifeguard calls him over and says, do you know you shouldn't pee in the swimming pool? And the boy says, but everyone does that. The lifeguard says, yes, I know, but not from the diving board. <laughs> okay, I think you can understand that one easily enough. Okay, so this is the first mini lesson in July. So a few things are going to change. Uh, firstly, I won't be filming any lessons on my sofa. They are all going to be on location, but uh, don't worry, there won't be any more in the bath. I'll go down the beach and uh, down a park, a cafe, and, and things like that to give you a taste of Bournemouth and of Britain. Okay, and I'm not going to be doing any more bass riffs, hooray. Um, but I do have another little plan. I'm going to Sorry, I don't know why I said like going to. I'm going to um, make a little bit of a theme in July and it's going to be about the Beatles. So each lesson I'm going to ask you a question um, uh, to do with the Beatles and I'm also going to hum the beginning or part of a Beatles song. So like in June where I gave you the chance to name all the bass riffs and win the first three month course for free, I'm going to do the same in July. So if you can name each Beatles song that I hum and also answer the Beatles question, then again you will be in with a chance to win the first three month course for free. It's only £25 anyway, but it's a bit of fun. So the first Beatles question in mini lesson uh, for mini lesson number one is what was the Beatles first hit? What was the Beatles first hit? We use hit to mean a um, song that did well or very well. Okay and um, now <laughs> some people said don't do this but uh, I want to do what I like in these videos and trust that you will also like them. I know not everyone will, but I just want to enjoy making the videos for you. Okay, so today's um, Beatles uh, hum, let's call it, is, I think very easy, let's wet my lips. I think that's dead easy. Dead easy means very easy or easy peasy or it's a piece of cake I've taught you or it's a doddle I've taught you. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's mini lesson on location in the bath and uh, no bass riff as I said so this is goodbye. Oh, I did forget one thing, got the remote in my hand. Um, keep watching and I'll put up a, uh, the answers for yesterday's review. 
uh, all about the idioms, phrasal verb, and collocations. Okay, bye. <laughs>